Hi everyone, my name is Raghu Motganahali. I'm a vascular surgeon as well as the Division Chief of uh, Vascular Surgery and uh, Program Director at the Indiana University School of Medicine Vascular Surgery Training Programs. I bring greetings to all of you from our division. Indiana University Vascular Surgery Program has been in existence for uh, close to two decades. Uh, we've been training traditional fellows for more than 20 years now as well as the integrated vascular surgery training residents uh, for the past decade. So we have a wealth of experience. We have uh, uh, created the training program uh, catering to the needs of uh, each of these uh, training pathways. So what can you expect from our program? Be it uh, an academic practice or a semi-academic practice or for that matter, if you're looking for uh, a community practice in future, the program can actually help you uh, to get to that destination. The program can be tailored and, uh, and which will meet your needs uh, in becoming a vascular surgeon, encompassing all the requirements and depth and breadth of the vascular surgery. So what can you expect from the program in addition? You also expect a warm, uh, welcoming group of individuals uh, who are very diverse and very supportive uh, to the growth of uh, one another. So our training program uh, takes place in uh, three major uh, healthcare facilities, all in the radius of uh, one mile. We have the tertiary or the quaternary uh, healthcare uh, referral center uh, for the Indiana University, which is the IU Methodist uh, Hospital. In addition, we have our residents rotate at the VA Hospital in Indianapolis. And also the Eskenazi Health, which is a safety net uh, community hospital, all within a radius of about one mile. So you don't have to be traveling uh, long distances uh, to meet your uh, training requirements. Each of our graduating residents graduate with uh, three to four times the number of cases required, which encompasses a uh, good amount of uh, open as well as the endovascular uh, surgery, as well as the case mix. Given our diverse practice locations, you will expect and you will learn from a host of uh, different pathologies, working with uh, different attendings and learning new skills almost every day. If you're looking for research opportunities, I will say very clearly that uh, we have uh, multiple tracks that can help you with that. We have a stem cell therapy lab headed by my partner, Dr. Mike Murphy, as well as the regenerative medicine lab headed by Dr. Chandan Sen. We have a health disparities uh, research opportunity with uh, my colleague, Dr. Andrew Gonzalez, or with uh, the educational lab headed by Dr. Stephanie Dees and Dr. Gary Dunnington. So you will have the opportunity to work with all these individuals depending on the choice of your uh, research uh, interest uh, for up to about two years, uh, uh, helping your uh, career uh, in terms of um, uh, learning the research uh, methodologies. Indianapolis is a great city. Um, it's at about 10th or 11th uh, bigger cities in the country. The cost of housing, the cost of living, is very much affordable. It's a town where you can get easily around without uh, getting stuck in a traffic jam for a long duration of uh, time. So if, I hope I've uh, stimulated your uh, interest uh, in our program. You will also see uh, some attestations from my residents as well as from my faculty uh, colleagues uh, who are uh, very much invested in your well-being and also taking care of your uh, training program. I would love to uh, speak with each one of you, uh, if you have any specific questions regarding our uh, training program, as well as the opportunities that we can provide uh, to you. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me uh, or my program coordinator, uh, Vera Bonnell. Uh, each of us will be happy to uh, help you understand uh, in depth uh, regarding our uh, program. While your um, uh, interview process is going to be virtual uh, this year, I wish I had met you personally so that we could have showcased the whole program uh, for you. I look forward to speaking with each one of you uh, during the uh, virtual interview process and I wish you the very best uh, as you uh, take a next step in becoming the vascular surgeon. Uh, we will be accepting the applications through the uh, NRMP and um, uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I applied to this program mostly because I was just blown away by the sheer case case volume that we got here. It was it was really it was really impressive to see the the, the total number of open and endovascular cases. Um, Indiana University is the referral center for the state of Indiana, as well as neighboring counties in Illinois, 
Ohio and uh, Missouri. So we got to see truly a, a wide variety of bread and butter cases as, alongside a lot of really, really complex complications and uh, just complex patients in general. I think I can say that the support system that I got here was absolutely phenomenal, whether it was peer to peer or amongst uh, faculty and uh, the faculty and myself. There's a dedicated mentorship program, which I thought was phenomenal. You really get to work with somebody one on one, identifying goals and uh, and kind of career uh, career objectives uh, and develop a plan so you can so you can meet those. I think one of the things that I I don't want to use the word surprise, but I was I was very happy with was how quickly you were brought in as part of the team. From day one, you're expected to read uh, about your patients, obviously, but then your opinion actually matters. You're getting put into these big cases uh, on the first day, and you're expected to actually be a part of the team, as I mentioned, to actually make decisions and to provide valuable input. And I, I really I really appreciated that, especially in such a small integrated program. It really does feel that you're more than a workhorse, that you, they actually care about your education and making you the best surgeon possible. Indiana University is a well-known university, and I've heard about a lot about the vascular surgeons here. I've met some of them during some of the conferences. And when I came and interviewed here, I met them in person, the residents and the faculty, and everybody was very helpful and kind. The program is very busy, and so this is something I was looking uh, at in residency programs. They have a huge case volume. You are able to see many cases, all cases in vascular surgery. And since the first month when I was on my vascular surgery rotation, I felt that. We were very busy. I was able to see all kinds of vascular surgery and vascular pathologies. So the first few months of residency are obviously very busy for you to get used to the new place and the new environment. However, I've got some free time. I'm discovering Indiana. It's a great place to live, very affordable. There are many parks and many things to do here. At the beginning, it's not easy. I was anxious because I've been on a hiatus for like almost four years. However, since the day I started, everybody was very helpful and supportive. From the faculty, the residents, even the nurses, everybody helped me navigate the first few months of residency and they taught me a lot and I'm now after three months I can say I'm very comfortable in my internship and in my clinical duties. So one of the main reasons that I, I chose this program was I really liked their educational uh, emphasis we have two uh, conferences that we have every week. The first one is what we call our Indications Conference. It's an opportunity for all of our staff as well as the residents to bring interesting patients from both the clinics and the wards to review different open and endovascular management between our different staff. Our second one is our uh, uh, journal club and book club. We have that every week where we learn the foundation and basics of surgical care for both general surgery and, and vascular to be able to implement that in our daily practices. Uh, from a educational standpoint, we have a big emphasis on simulation. We have both an endovascular and open program. Our endovascular program is, uh, has been started within the last few years and we're able to do complex lower extremity interventions and learn how to do carotids as well as thoracic and abdominal aortic interventions as well in a more controlled setting. Uh, we also have an open uh, simulation lab where we both do uh, cadavers and pig labs where we can learn different exposures as well as uh, uh, management of, of different pathologies in a more controlled setting. Yeah, so one of the nice things being at IU is that we do have a spot for the integrated resident one a year as well as a traditional fellow one a year. And being here for, this is now my seventh year here, uh, one of the nice things is seeing a total of seven traditional fellows basically come through the program. And we do have a great experience with them. They have, are a nice resource for us because they have that breadth of general surgery to rely upon. And so we do pick their brains often about general surgery topics. Um, and we do rotate one traditional fellow and one integrated resident on each service. So what we do is basically feed off of each other and learn from each other in the same way uh, as we would from our depending staff as well. I have a great relationship. Some of my good friends now are old traditional fellows that just graduated or have graduated before in the past. So I think one of the nice things is, about this program is that it's changed so much in the seven years. Uh, Dr. Modigana Holly being the division chief and the 
program director is very responsive to how you want your career to be. So when I came in to the program, I wanted to have an academic career. So he built a track for me in which I could do two years of research and build my CV in terms of research and uh, publications. So one of the things I was looking for as well when I came into the program was a program that would be very balanced, meaning that we would have an open experience as well as an endo experience that was comparable in both uh, uh, realms. One of the things that we don't have the advantage of being an integrated resident is that comfort in the abdomen that the general surgery residents and the traditional fellows typically have. So it was important to me to be in a program where they did a lot of open as well as endovascular operations. Being at IU, what we do see is a lot of very complicated juxtarenal as well as pararenal aneurysms, as well as type four thoracal abdominal aneurysms. And one of the nice things that we do is do these both open and endo with complication uh, complicated reconstructions, whether it's, you know, medial visceral rotations, retroperitoneal approach, or fenestrated parallel grafts, or even the TMB program itself. So one of the nice things about being here is the culture is very much towards wellness for the, uh, the, the vascular residents. The cost of living is very low, and our program director and our division as a whole is very supportive for pursuits outside of the hospital as well. I'm one of the four integrated residents who is here, who couples matched here. So we all have families. Many of us have kids. Many of us have uh, uh, um, pets as well. And many of us have bought a house and made Indianapolis our home. The mix between open and endovascular cases is actually one of the strongest features of this program. Um, we do do a lot of endovascular surgery. That's, I think, true across the nation now, but we still do a very significant amount of open surgery. Um, I think probably more than many programs across the country. Um, what I also really like about it is, you know, I wouldn't say we're open heavy because we do do the complex endovascular um, things like the fenestrated endovascular um, aortic repairs. Uh, we're involved with TVARs, with cardiothoracic surgery. Um, we have staff here who will do pedal access and other, you know, more esoteric types of endovascular procedures. We do the, um, a lot of hybrid procedures like the TCAR, the transcarotid, uh, transcervical carotid artery revascularization, um, which I think is a beautiful, wonderful little procedure. Uh, but from the open side, you know, our, our staff don't push everything to make it fit into endo. You know, we do open aortas all the time and not just explants of infected grafts or insanely complicated patients, but just your young, healthy, you know, patient who has favorable anatomy for that. You know, we'll, we'll do an open aorta. There's absolutely no concern with case numbers. Um, I think most of our seniors actually end up getting their required open uh, aortas the first year or early into the second year. I did end up doing two years of research between um, clinical years two and three, and that is a, an integral part of this program. Uh, I, my feelings about research kind of went up and down through the course of my education. I was initially really excited about it in medical school, um, actually wanted to do more research during medical school. Um, but then after I got into the hospital and actually started residency, I'll confess that I wasn't as excited, uh, mostly because I was just so happy to be in the operating room and finally, you know, being able to actually do what I realized that I wanted to do. Um, Retrospectively though, it was an absolutely fantastic experience and I'm really glad um, after a prolonged discussion between the, uh, Dr. Modiganahali and I that we ended up deciding that I should go ahead and do the two years of research. I did spend two years working in Dr. Murphy's lab um, on mouse models of vascular disease, both peripheral arterial disease and um, abdominal aortic aneurysms. And I had a lot of fun with that, doing the mouse surgery and really being able to you know, incorporate my ideas um, uh, into the direction that the research was going. Uh, Dr. Murphy is a fantastic mentor, been fantastic to work with, um, so that was a good experience. I also had the opportunity to get a master's in biostatistics, which I think long term is going to be incredibly useful. Uh, a lot of math and a lot of programming involved, um, but both of those are, ended up being things that I really enjoy. Um, so looking back, back, I'm definitely glad that this program provided that opportunity to take those two years of dedicated time. Um, and that I was able to do something that I think is um, ultimately going to be something that I use and something that I like. Said I'm in my second year of research or professional development time. Uh, so I'm working in Dr. Murphy's lab. Dr. Mike Murphy is one of our vascular surgeons. Uh, is very well funded uh, through a lot of grants. He does clinical work, but he also has a basic science lab. 
Uh, we use a lot of stem cell therapy and immunomodulation for aortic aneurysms and for lower extremity occlusive disease. Uh, we have several mouse models that we're working on and we also translate that to clinical studies and clinical trials largely out of the VA. So when I came to Indiana, I really did not have great research experience. Uh, especially with regards to basic science research. So I, I knew that we had a research requirement here and I was definitely open-minded to that. And when the time came to figure out what lab I wanted to work in, um, the natural process is just to funnel into Dr. Murphy's lab, so which is a tremendous resource to have uh, if you don't know what you want to do. Uh, he can kind of guide you, there's PhD assistance. Uh, it's just a great way to stay within the department, uh, do good research, have the funding to do that, and uh, really have a good learning experience because of it. There are other opportunities if that's something you don't want to do, if you're not a basic science researcher. Uh, there's a bunch of other, or several other uh, general surgeons that also have labs that you can work with. Some of them do outcomes-based research, some of them do health disparities research or education research. Um, and within our own department, we have hired some new faculty members with research interests of their own. Uh, I believe they may uh, increase our outcomes-based research and health disparities research here in the coming years. And for the person that's very motivated, if you have your own projects in mind and wish to seek your own grants, I know very confidently that Dr. Murphy would be the best asset in terms of actually getting those grants for you. So I think there's a variety of research opportunities here. For myself, it was somebody that didn't know how to do research, but for anybody that loves research, there's even more opportunities for them too. What makes our research program unique compared to other programs is that we focus on basic science, uh, in clinically relevant animal models and then we as rapidly as possible translate that into clinical trials. As a result we've had over seven clinical trials in peripheral arterial disease ranging from stem cell treatment for claudication, stem cell treatment to prevent amputations and critical limb threatening ischemia and a first in man aortic aneurysm trial and we're expanding upon that with a new set of uh, experiments and clinical studies to look at different routes of injection of stem cells as well as genetically modified stem cells. But what makes us unique is that we're not just at the bench side and we're not just doing industry sponsored clinical research. We're taking our discoveries at the bench and translating those into investigator designed and initiated and NIH or Veterans Administration funded clinical trials. Real science. So we also provide a very unique opportunity for uh, residents coming into the laboratory to obtain a master's degree. And this can be in bioinformatics, it could be in uh, clinical research, we offer a master's program, and we have the unique opportunity to offer a master's degree in immunology. And so those three programs are readily available for a master's program and our last uh, resident completed the program. Uh, completed her master's in bioinformatics and uh, great skill set that she has. We collaborate with numerous laboratories here on campus as well as across the nation and so there's uh, opportunities to work with people from other laboratories and there are opportunities to be uh, to visit laboratories elsewhere in the United States. Kind of my favorite thing about the program, uh, I know it may sound cliche but it is really the people that are here. Uh, I I truly think that I get along really well with everyone here. Everyone's been in incredibly supportive uh, of you no matter your ups and downs. Um, it's a great learning environment. Here at the, the IU Vascular Surgery Residency Program, we do have uh, two years of dedicated uh, research required after uh, we completed after our PGY2 clinical year. There, the way that it works is there's a, a variety of labs here on campus and uh, in terms of the our position, we're free to choose uh, whichever lab that we uh, would like to pursue or have our interests in. I personally chose to work in the, the lab of Dr. Murphy. He's one of our, our attending vascular surgeons. He has a, a well-funded basic science lab, uh, which is, sort of has an immunology focus. Yeah, I think uh, the research rotation uh, for the residents, I think, is very valuable. Uh, they get a chance to come in, in the lab uh, and learn uh, practical applications, um, do research in projects that have clinical impact, um, and, and get hands-on experience, uh, animal surgeries, uh, bench work, uh, molecular types analyses, uh, all the literature, background, um, information that's necessary in order to do the project. And they have, a, they have an opportunity 
uh, to do the background reading, formulate the experiments, uh, perform the experiments, and learn how to analyze the data and formulate that into presentations, uh, abstracts, and, and manuscripts for publication, and also participate in grant preparations. Uh, so they learn a whole gamut of, uh, of, of uh, activities needed uh, to do research in the lab, and it's all, at least in our case, is all uh, clinically related. Hopefully, will have impact um, uh, on patients in the future. I think uh, one of the things that's very unique about this program is I think we offer a wide range uh, of experience. Uh, not just in open and endovascular surgery, uh, ranging from small cases to your more complex uh, cases, but also we uh, offer a unique training environment for trainees to really experience uh, really the breadth of practices that are out there from private and community practice all the way to uh, academic tertiary uh, practice uh, and really everything in between. I think that what we do, and I think do very well, is that initially when a trainee uh, comes to our program, uh, especially our residents, um, what they're able to experience initially is learning kind of basic um, perioperative surgical care as well as actually getting time in the operating room to operate and actually be uh, first assist or surgeon junior in the operating room. Over time, uh, they're able to mature in their surgical skills. Uh, and obviously we give them more responsibility and autonomy as far as being able to achieve work-life balance. Um, you know, our trainees are going to get a very rich experience in their training. Um, there is plenty of opportunities uh, to learn both in and out of the operating room. But also we find it important that their overall kind of, you know, emotional and mental well-being is, is important too because that helps kind of keep pushing them through the program. So we uh, often encourage residents to take time to do the things that they need to do. We realize that they have a life outside of uh, their training. So I think one of the unique things about our program is that we have different surgeons with different styles of doing surgery. So at the end of the day, at the end of your training, you're going to be exposed to different techniques between surgeons which you can take and make your own and incorporate it in your practice. So what's very important to look for in a residency or fellowship is that the program has access to all the latest clinical trials. Um, you know, as you know, vascular surgery is quickly evolving, the techniques are evolving, and uh, you want to be exposed to those latest clinical trials, and that's only going to make your training, you know, at the end of the day, more comprehensive. So I, I feel like our program has access to all the clinical trials, and, uh, you know, we were, for example, one of the first programs to have TCAR or the fenestrated endograph. So the residents end up having a lot of exposure to those kind of complex cases early on because of our enrollment in clinical trials. So, you know, I, I'm originally from California, so I'm not from, you know, I was born in Indiana, uh, but I left at a very young age. I'm from California. And so I did, after training, have some questions about, uh, you know, where I would live. And ultimately the decision was that this, the Indiana has a lot to offer. You know, within a 20 minute radius of downtown, there are multiple suburban communities that have excellent school systems, there's beautiful housing, it's safe. Uh, there's no shortage of sporting events. Uh, you know, for example, Indy 500, there's basketball, there's football. Uh, there's no shortage of any kind of food options here. You know, you'd be surprised how many different restaurants there are here. I personally, I'm a foodie, so there's no, there's no shortage of restaurants or activities. I have never once felt that uh, I had you know, a lack of options here. There's a children's museum, there's uh, the zoo, which is one of the best zoos we have, so there's no shortage of activities. I think that the amount of autonomy that the residents are given and the fellows are given both inside and outside of the operating room, it makes it very unique compared to other programs. I think that IU's program for vascular surgery is very good with respect to three things. First is the amount of autonomy that residents and fellows are given both inside and outside of the operating room. The second is the wide variety of cases that is available across the full range of vascular surgery. And third is that we still have a great open experience. I think that one of the unique aspects of Indiana University is its collaboration across the state. As part of the CTSI, or the Clinical Translational Sciences Institute, we have the ability to partner with faculty not just here at the Indianapolis campus of IU, but also with the Bloomington campus uh, with Notre Dame. 
and with Purdue University. Each of these institutions has its incredible strengths and a wealth of knowledge and people who are available and willing to collaborate with uh, residents as well as uh, fellows. In my particular area, I'm looking at how artificial intelligence will improve outcomes for angiography. And I have rich collaborations with people both in Bloomington as well as with Purdue. If you were to come here, I would be very excited to work with you on exploring that part of vascular surgery. One other aspect that makes IU special is the collegial relationship between the faculty and the trainees. Uh, beyond just being our trainees, we also view ourselves as mentors for them and people who have their best interest at heart. Um, outside of the hospital, Indianapolis is also really a great place to live. One of the reasons that I uh, chose to move here is because of the low cost of living as well as the availability of most of the things that are typical of any large major city without the cost. Well, over the last uh, 25 or 30 years while I've been here, I've seen uh, vascular surgery grow from a field that is almost entirely an open procedure to one that uh, is at least half endovascular. I've seen us become more and more minimally invasive. While our program still uh, teaches good open procedures so that residents know how to do open aneurysms and open bypasses, open mesenteric procedures, and open lower extremity procedures, uh, when endovascular procedures won't work. Um, I've seen us stay on the cutting edge of all new technology as it comes up. I've seen uh, a great list of new faculty coming on board who bring lots of uh, additional experience and opportunities to the program. They bring lots of different ideas on how to treat patients. We're a very collegial group. Uh, we get along well with each other. We, uh, we're friends. We, uh, we try to make, uh, be both mentors and friends to our residents and bring them into our family. I think we spend a lot of time caring about them and trying to teach them. We have very interesting areas of research. Mike Murphy has a large number of uh, NIH grants and uh, does some very basic research which is uh, advanced field quite immensely. I try to do a lot of work in artificial intelligence and blood flow hemodynamics and ultrasound which I think is a, a little bit of an unusual thing uh, that we can do in our program. Um, I think we spend a lot of time trying to teach and help. Through, through the last uh... 30 some years that I've been here, we actually have established two vascular surgery residencies, both an integrated and an independent one. Uh, we've gone from myself and Dolores to 10 vascular surgeons uh, and with a lot of variety in training. Uh, and the school has grown as well. Uh, originally it was just the hospital with the school and now we're part of IU Health, which is a much larger uh, hospital system. Uh, certainly provides us a stable base uh, so that education will always go on. Uh, and so it's been a good partnership. So the, the, one of the excellent things about our program is actually the diversity of training that you'll get. Uh, so at the at, uh, Methodist Hospital, which is kind of our quaternary care, ho uh, care hospital, we really take care of the things that no one else wants to take care of in the state or really haven't seen. So we have a lot of very complex uh, aortic operations, uh, revascularization procedures, and those venous studies that uh, you might not see anyplace else. They, they come here because this is where we are. We also have Riley Hospital, so we have a good experience in pediatric vascular surgery, which is in most places probably not even seen or maybe transferred to someplace else. We have a VA hospital, so we have more bread and butter you know, male vascular surgeons that you'd see in the community. We have a city hospital uh, in Eskenazi Hospital, so the, more the inner city hospital because it is our city hospital. So you'll see different people with different ethnicities, which often present differently in terms of the vascular surgery that they have and how they react to therapy. Uh, so you get a, a good feeling for how that happens as well. Plus we have outreach programs. Uh, to West and to Arnett, so those are really community-based practices. 
so you get more of the bread and butter operations, um, you know, how, it, how a practice, a private practice might operate. So you get that experience as well. So I think when you look at training programs, we probably have the best variety that you can get. And the good thing about being involved with IU Health as a hospital system is that we're large enough within the state that we'll never have to worry about having educational possibilities for our residents. One thing that's unique about Indiana University and our vascular surgery program is the limb preservation program of which I'm the director. And I think that Indiana University is a great place for this program because it brings together a combination of some really world-class researchers and resources and support from our institution for research with a statewide coverage of our health system so that we are able to treat patients from around the state and really have the full spectrum of care of a diverse patient population throughout the state. I would recommend IU to trainees for a couple of reasons. One is that I think we have a place where we support trainees in developing their own vision of what they want to get out of this program. So a key component of our program is that uh, trainees engage in research, but that can be the full spectrum of research from basic science uh, research with stem cell therapies or uh, unique novel devices for treating diabetic foot ulcers or it could be research into education and how we develop trainees and how we teach vascular surgery and I think that having a program that allows trainees to develop their own vision over the course of their training is something that is really unique to IU. I also think that IU is a place where there are great opportunities for surgical development. We have lots of good open surgery, as well as the most up-to-date novel endovascular and other investigational devices. So it's a place where trainees can really learn everything from the textbook to the next textbook.